Welcome to Electron Line. A presentation of statistical thermodynamics would not be complete unless we were able to show how to calculate the total number of microstates in a particular situation. For example, if we have n number of boxes or n number of energy levels and we have capital N or large N number of molecules, what are all the various ways in which those molecules could be distributed among the various boxes or among the various energy levels? So here, we're going to take the case where there are N energy levels and large N distinguishable particles. And of course, again, we say we want distinguishable particles. Now here we have a simple example where there's three energy levels and six total particles, but that's not necessarily what we want to deal with. This is just a simple example, but it should work for any particular case. So let's say that there is this many different energy levels or this many different boxes all the way from one to small n, n of course being the total number of energy levels or the total number of boxes. We can call them the outcomes or the occupation numbers. In other words, the number of particles in each box or the number of particles in each energy level are considered the outcomes for each energy level or each box or the occupation numbers. That does make sense. So for each energy level, we claim that uh, for each energy level, yes, of course. So again, that could be uh, I wouldn't call it for each energy level, for, uh, maybe for all energy levels, right? Because, yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to say for all... No, 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 I each is good. All right, for a moment there, I wasn't sure if I got the right word there or not, but I do have the right word. For each energy level, we're going to take the total number of particles. If we have six, we call it six factorial. And then we divide that by the number of particles in each level factorial all multiplied together in the denominator. So the numerator always comes, comes out to be the total number of particles factorial divided by. Now this symbol right here looks like a capital pi symbol. So that means not the summation but the multiplication of all the various numbers we're going to end up here factorial from j equals 1 to n. Again, there's n boxes or n energy levels, so we're going to multiply in the denominator all of them together, however many there are on the first box times however many in the second box, and of course factorial. So let's say in this case it would be 3 factorial times 1 factorial times 2 factorial, but if there's more levels, we'll just keep going for each level. So that is the equation we use for each energy level, so it does work for each. All right. Now, let's do an example. Let's say that we have n distinguishable particles, a certain number of particles, and let's say that we have three boxes or three energy levels. So at least that makes it easy to work with. And then we're going to expand that to the general format of the equation. So if that's the case, we'll have n1 number of molecules in the first box or particles in the first box, n2 in the second box, and n3 in the third box n1 plus n2 plus n3 do add up to the total number n. Now we're not told how many we have, so it doesn't have to be 6, it could be any number. So what are the number of ways of selecting the number of particles out of the total number for box number 1? Well, the way to do that is as follows. We take n factorial total number of particles divided by, well, n1, however many there are in n1, and we take that factorial and then we, we multiply that times the remaining number of particles, which would be the total minus what we put in N1 factorial. So N minus N1 is the remaining number of particles that we have. So now we've done that, now we want to select out of the remaining particles, out of the N minus N1 particles, how many will be in the second box? So here we have n minus n1, that's the remaining number of particles, and here we have n2, the particles in the second box, which is written as n minus n1 factorial divided by n2 factorial times what's remaining. Well, we started with n, we took this many out for the first box, and we took this many out for the second box, that is then the remaining number of particles factorial. So, n minus n1 minus n2 is the remaining number of particles. Now, how do we select the number of particles in the third box? Well, we have this many remaining out of n minus n1 minus n2 particles for box 3. So, 
we have the total number of particles remaining, n minus n1 minus n2, and this is how many particles we're going to put in box 3. So we take the total remaining factorial divided by what we put in box 3 divided by what's remaining. Now, is there anything remaining after we put all the particles in box 1, and some particles in box 2, and whatever is left in box 3, there will be no particles remaining. So we have n3 minus n3, or zero particles remaining. And you can see that there's only one way in which this can be done. If you put some particles in box 1 and some particles in box 2, whatever is left, all of those must be put in box 3, so there's only one way to do that. So, when we then come and try to calculate the W for all of the particles, well, let's see here, we have the number of particles put in box 1, the number of particles put in box 2, and the number of particles put in box 3, and we multiply them together. That's what we mean by this equation right here, we multiply them together. And notice then that n minus s, n1 factorial, those will cancel, we'll see that in just a moment. But we also know that n minus n1 minus n2, well that simply becomes n3, and then for the, fa for the last one, of course, then we just have multiply times 1. So the n minus n1 factorial cancels on both sides in the numerator, or when the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we end up with simply n factorial left. In the denominator, we have n1 factorial times n2 factorial times n3 factorial. So we end up with this equation right here. That's exactly what we have over here, but only for a case where we have three boxes. Well, how do we expand that in general? Well, it's very easy to see that if there's a fourth one, or fifth one, or sixth box, that we simply add an additional one. Well, not add, we add another factor in the denominator, so we end up with n factorial in the numerator, and however many boxes or levels, energy levels there are, it'll be n1 factorial, n2 factorial, n3 factorial, n4 factorial. We can just keep going with that system. You can see then the equation will simply end up looking like that. So that's what we're trying to do, show that this is the general equation for the total number of what we call microstates for each of the energy levels or each of the boxes. So you can see that if, if we know how many there are in each box, we can then calculate the number of microstates depending upon what we have. And that is how it's done. All right, you want to call that a wrap? Yeah, I think so. Good enough for today.